This section is over zeros of polynomials. Let's go ahead and review what it means to be a zero of a polynomial. If C, or if a number is a zero, then that number when plugged into the function is equivalent to zero. So just like I said here, if C is a zero, then F of C is equal to zero. So the way that we figure out what our zeros are is we set the whole entire equation equal to zero, like we've done numerous times before. So we set f of x equal to zero. Now we've done this a lot throughout the whole semester, and we know that we solve equations lots of different ways. In the last section, we learned that if we have a larger polynomial and we can't solve it by factoring using our old school methods, then we can factor it by now using synthetic division or long division. But we had a concern of what do we start with? What do we divide our polynomial by in the first place? Now, my solution to this problem was to go ahead and graph it on your graphing calculator and see where it crossed the x-axis, because we know our x-intercepts are the same as zeros. They just come in different formats. But this problem is going to address a different concern that we are going to have. So to see that concern, I'm going to start with this example. f of x is equal to 5x to the third minus 12x squared minus 26x plus 12. In part a, we want to find the zeros, meaning we want to set our equation equal to zero. And in part b, we want to factor this. Okay. So we know that we cannot factor this by using any of our old factoring techniques. It has four terms, so we might be able to try factor by grouping, but it won't work out because our groups won't match. So we have to do this either by synthetic division or by long division. I'm going to go ahead and do synthetic division. I think that is the easier of the two. So I'm not missing any coefficients, so I can just list them all here. But again, the concern that we have is, what do I divide it by? Okay, now, in the last section, I showed you just to graph this on the graphing calculator, and that will give you a starting place. So, pulling up my calculator here, I already have my function inserted into the y equals, and let me go ahead and graph this on the standard window, and I can see that I have three x-intercepts which I should because this is a degree three problem and that tells me that I should have three zeros. The problem with this though is that it doesn't intercept our x-axis on any whole number or any integer. So I need to guess basically what these fractions or what these decimals are in between. So let's just look at this one right here. So I have this point in between 0 and 1, and I can guess what it might be. I might guess it's 1 half, but I don't think that's it exactly. So I might guess something a little smaller, maybe 1 third, and that might or might not be. But the problem is, is there's infinitely many fractions and decimals in between 0 and 1. So me graphing it doesn't really help me to figure out what to start it with. So that's why we need more information. So. What we have to help us out with this, in addition to graphing it on our graphing calculator, we have a rational zeros theorem. And what that tells us is it tells us all the possible rational zeros. Now, if you remember the word rational, that's going to tell us all of the possible fractions. All of the possible fractions that can be zeros. And remember, whole numbers can also be written as fractions. So when we go through this process, this is going to tell us all of the possible whole numbers and fractions that can be zeros on this function. Now, it's not going to give us any one of them guaranteed, but this with the combination of the graph and calculator is going to narrow down our options quite a bit. Okay, so what the rational theorems does is it takes all of the factors of our constant term, which in this format is labeled by P, so all of the factors of p, and it divides it by all of the factors of our leading coefficient. So in this case is q, divides it by all of the factors of q. So again, this is all the factors of the constant term, which is the very last term if it's in descending order. And it divides it by all of the factors of our leading 
coefficient, which is the first coefficient if it's again in descending order. So for my example here, the same polynomial that I had before, I'm going to narrow down my possibilities of what can actually be a zero or a rational zero, meaning a fraction or whole number, by using this rational zero theorem. So I'm going to take all of my factors of p, which is my constant term, and I'm going to divide it by all of my factors of q, which is my leading coefficient. So the p and the q isn't really important here. All it is is that we need to know the factors of my constant term over my factors of my leading coefficient. So in the green, I need to list all factors that go into 12 evenly. And not only do I need to list just the positive, but I also need to list the negative as well. So my factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. So those are all things that go into 12 evenly. I need to do the same thing with my factors of my leading coefficient, plus or minus 1, and then plus or minus 5. So if I partner all of my numerators with all of my denominators, that's going to give me all of my possible whole numbers and fractions that can possibly be zeros. So let me partner all these up. Now, I don't want to write plus or minus all these times, so I'm just going to write plus or minus, and then I'm going to do the set notation. So that means I have both positives and negatives for all of these answers. Let me first divide everything by 1. So that means I have 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, so on and so forth. And so those give me the possible whole numbers that can be zeros of my function. Now let me divide them all by 5. So I have 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 6 fifths, and 12 fifths. So these are all of my possible rational zeros. So when I compare this with the graph, so I've pulled up my graph again here, and now I want to compare with this list of numbers with my x-intercepts that I see on my graph. So again, the very first one that I see is something between 0 and 1. So I need to look at my list of numbers, and I need to see what all possibilities do I have between 0 and 1. Well, I can have a one-fifth, I can have two-fifths, three-fifths, and four-fifths. So those are my only possibilities between zero and one. I also have possibilities between three and four. I see that my graph intercepts it between three and four. But when I look at my list of numbers here, I don't have any numbers that go between three and four. So that means this zero on the right here is not a rational zero. And I'll address that at the end of this problem. I also see something between negative 1 and negative 2. And I again look at my list of numbers, and I see that I don't have any numbers that fit between negative 1 and negative 2. So again, that's going to give me a 0 that is not rational. So the only rational 0 that I possibly have is between 0 and 1. And let me use my calculator to see which of these actually fits, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, or 4 fifths. So I'm going to pull my calculator back up, okay, and now I'm going to use the trace feature to see which one works. So I push my trace button, and then I type in my possibilities. So if I type in 1 fifth and hit enter, that gives me a point up here, which tells me that that is not a 0 or an x-intercept of the function. Let me try the next one of 2 fifths. So that does put me on my x-axis there. So that confirms that 2 fifths is a 0. And since I've narrowed down all the rest of my possibilities, that tells me that 2 fifths is the only possible rational 0, meaning the only one that's a whole number or a fraction for this problem. So by my calculator, that tells me the only rational 0 on this problem is when x is equal to 2 fifths. So that is my only x-intercept of which I see right here. OK, I'm going to stop this video because of time. But in the next video, I'm going to finish up this example.
by not only confirming that this is my rational zero, but finding my other zeros and then factoring it completely. 